on evidence for water. Uh, this area, well, it looks like that might be wind-formed features. Let's, let's put that as secondary. Let's focus on this. There's this. The layers seem so thin they couldn't be volcanic lava, like previous missions had seen. It's an irregular surface with bedding. These rocks are not massive. They're composed of millimeter thin layers. And we want to know the geometric relationships among those layers because they're going to tell us whether these layered rocks accumulated in wind or water. This is one of the neater uh, slab-like rocks. When we first saw this, it looked like a huge feature. Turns out right, that this little machine. bed here is about 10 <laughs> centimeters high. So this is something that a six-year-old could easily skip over in a single bound. If you go from one end of this outcrop all the way to the other, which extends a little bit beyond the view seen in this composite, again, it's about 20 meters across. In their first close-ups, the researchers saw strange, round, BB-sized objects seemingly popping out of the rocks. Because they showed up grayer than the rust-red rocks, Jim Rice called them blueberries. The name stuck. They also saw elongated holes that looked like chicken scratches. There were hunches, clues, hypotheses, but as yet, no conclusions. To learn what the rocks were made of and how they'd formed, they'd have to dig down beneath the surface. For that, they would need the rock abrasion tool, or rat. Spirit had already proven it worked. That's a hole. Yeah. Yes! Yes! Damn it, yes! Yes! It worked! You were always confident. The hours notwithstanding. Wow. I just, I just, wow. This was the first Mars mission to carry an instrument designed to let researchers get below the rust red dust and weathered surface, allowing the other sensors to probe deep down. The rock abrasion tool outperformed all design specifications. But it began in a very low tech way and was built and tested far from NASA JPL. Elizabeth Street, downtown New York City. Honey Bee Robotics, named for some of nature's most industrious workers. Back in 2000, Steve Squires came to Honey Bee co-founder Steve Gorovan in search of something no one had ever built before. This is the birth of the rat. This is the first time the rat was ever discussed, and he, uh, that was his dream. And what you see today, uh, downstairs, is the, is the uh, incarnation of this, this priceless doodle. The whole point of this payload is to build a set of instruments that can read the record preserved in the chemistry and the morphology of the rock and learn what conditions were like when the rock formed. The mantra that we're being told to follow is follow the water, and there's a greater likelihood that the water on Mars lies uh, further below.